Michael's out here side dressing his own corn today. It's actually looking really good for state ground too. Um, I planted this last, I think. This was some of the last corn I planted for the year, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's definitely the shortest corn we've got, but like I said, it's also the last corn we planted. So looking pretty good. See if it makes uh, 250 bushel or not. If it does, I'll be really, really surprised. This out here will. I have no doubt about that. It's it's really good ground. It's the fact that you got trees on all four sides of the field. That's what kills the average. So this dirt is capable of making 250 bushel corn every year, but the fields themselves are not. Well, you need to get out here with a sprayer because there's some Johnson grass getting started. Johnson's grass is really bad out here on the state ground for some reason. I don't really struggle with it on anything but the state ground. Um, it's easy, pretty easy to keep clean everywhere else, but everywhere else I keep the edges of the fields mowed down and uh, generally don't really have many weed issues on the sides of the fields. Then this is beans over here, which it needs sprayed as well. So. I'm just kind of driving around killing time. Uh, we gotta move the tender. Filling up with the last load of 32% in ATS here. We got tanks in this building here with a dike around them. But this will be it. We might run like 200 gallons short of getting done. So I may have to run to Helena or something to go get some more, which this is their tender. Most of this fertilizer came from them anyhow. Um, it's just easier to have them deliver it into the tanks and then they don't have to tender it back and forth. It's just easier that way. I've already got the tanks, so then nobody's waiting on anybody and we can work weekends, holidays, midnight, whatever we want and uh, we don't have to wait. So getting it loaded. I've been working on the hay mower while Michael side dresses. I haven't recorded any of that, but uh, it's, it's almost back together, so we'll see. Ran to Montgomery to Helena here and picked up another 250 gallon just to be safe. It's pretty sure we were going to be cutting it really close, so figure 250 gallon. Yeah, if we got 100 gallon extra, so be it. We'll put it somewhere, but I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to run short. Next thing's next. I'm going to start going through this baler. I don't know shit about it. I've never even had a net wrap baler. I've definitely never had a baler this nice. Um, I don't know anything about it other than it's covered in pigeon shit because I parked it in a lean-to up at my house and anything that gets parked up there gets covered in pigeon shit. I, if anybody's got any good ideas other than eradicating them with a shotgun because I've done that and they just, they come back faster than you can kill them. But uh, I don't know much about this thing other than it has belts and rollers and makes really big bales. The belts appear to be in good shape, probably. I mean, the baler as a whole appears to be in decent shape, but uh, I don't really know anything about it. So, yeah, gonna do some figuring out. Luckily, I've got some, uh, got a couple buddies at New Holland dealerships that uh, know a thing or two about these, so. I'm gonna give one of them a call before I actually try and use the thing. And yeah, we'll see if we can't get anything figured out on it. This chain needs tightened. This wheel needs straightened out. It got bent on the way here. Um, but all in all, everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna grease it and uh, yeah, see what we can't do with it. It's in pretty good shape for the most part. So straight away, I don't, I'm just gonna say right now, the only thing I know about this baler is the fact that I own it now, but I've greased it and oiled the chains, and I will say that it's got grease banks, and I really, really, really like that, because grease banks keep life easy. You don't have to crawl around the damn thing looking for all of them. Um, so I like the grease banks straight away. Second thing I really like is that these chains are all on spring-loaded tensioners, so you don't have to adjust them all the time. This one needs adjusted right here. Obviously, it's not on a tensioner. It's just got an idler. 
Um, and then around back here, or around the other side here, uh, this chain I'm probably gonna take a link out of just because it's it's pretty loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a link out of that, but grease banks on both sides, a um, few grease fittings out on their own that I saw. I think I got them all. Um, I don't have a manual for this thing. I would like to get one. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll work. I have no idea whatsoever how to load net wrap. I know it goes on here, but I don't remember how, and I know it, it goes in. Yeah, I, I don't know. But uh, there's a diagram on here. I'm sure I can figure it out. Or I'll waste a whole roll of net wrap. We'll see. But uh, I think I got it figured out, but I'm not positive. But uh, yeah, we'll see. See how she does. Um, Got to straighten that wheel out. Uh, the yellow, the red paint on it is honestly perfect, but the yellow paint's really faded. So I might touch up some of the yellow paint eventually. I'm not going to do that right now, but might eventually do that. And uh, I think I might just bail with the Magnum. Um, honestly, I, I may just unhook the planter and bail with the Magnum. Then the 90 horse, the 5230, it can stay on the hay mower. The whatever I have, 50, no, I don't even know what it is. That little 70 horse tractor, I don't even know the model number of it. I'm not going to lie. But uh, whatever it is, um, it's going to be on the rake. And then this will be on the Magnum baling hay. So pretty nice baler, I think. It's probably way more baler than what I need. Uh, Michael said I'm one cow away from being a cowboy, and he is right. I don't have a single one yet, but we're working on it. Uh, still going to happen. They're going right out there. So I'm going to get this hay cut and then start fencing it in. Morning. Driving around looking at the corn, and it is looking good. I don't know. Camera doesn't really pick it up. It picks up my crooked rows a little bit, but... Uh, I planted without auto steer all season, so you know what? Live with it. Um, I planted, you know, fairly straight. I was going to make a joke there, but it wasn't YouTube appropriate. But, uh, yeah, it'll do for who it's for. Got to make sure the yard stays green, especially the new grass. This is the way to do it. <laughs> Well, it's time to cut hay today. I cut some yesterday, not a lot, but enough to try the mower out. Got it all back together, greased it, and did some shenanigans behind the farm here with it. Um, that is all knocked down, but this tractor is not big enough for it. This one was still on the side dress bar yesterday, so I'm gonna give them the old switcheroo. And then that one's going on the hay rake and the magnum is going on the baler. So there's the baler, there's the rake. The jack for this does not work very well. I've got it all unhooked right now. So uh, I'm gonna use the power jack over here that has 70 some horse and it's a lot easier to do things that way. Morning. Hay mower, rake, and baler. It's Memorial Day today. We're gonna try this baler out for the first time. So this hay's been cut for two days. So I'm gonna rake it. Dew's pretty much off this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and rake it. And then uh, I might try and bale it this afternoon. So we'll see. Still gotta hook the baler up and everything. I haven't even ran the thing yet, so. Hopefully it works, otherwise we're hooking to the square baler and doing that. Well, I already got kicked out of my own baler. Um, the guy running it right now 
Well, he works at a New Holland dealership, so he knows a little more about them than I do. I was having issues getting uh, net wrap started. I had it uh, all ran the right way, but I was, uh, I didn't know how to run the monitor quite right. So he came, I already had a bale made and wrapped, but it wasn't one that cut right. So we adjusted on that a little bit. And then he made the second bale, which we dumped and we both weren't paying attention because we were painting the net wrap and it didn't get ejected all the way and we closed the gate on it. So cut that one up and strung it out with the skid steer. That's why I'm in this. We're gonna rebale it and uh, hopefully third time's the charm and everything works from now. The auto wrap's working and everything's working like it should now. So life's good. And yeah, that tractor's a little overkill, but overkill's underrated and it has a cab, so. Dusty hay, it's kinda nice sitting in a cab. It's not wrapping right still. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now that I got it figured out, it is making some absolutely perfect bales. I'm putting too much net wrap on, so I just turned the number of wraps down on the baler. Um, but uh, it's making really, really good bales and it absolutely freaking eats hay. I've never had a baler that would eat hay like this thing. I'm driving slow just because these fields are rough, but in the smoother areas, you can run as fast as you want to run and it does a great job. Well, it was going really good over here till it wasn't. Uh, made two bales on this farm. And I've got a flat tire that's completely off the bead. So that's fun. That's real fun. Got about another 20 acres mowed so far today. It's been really, really thin hay, but we've been extremely dry. And this needs fertilizer too, but this is kind of a year to year. Yeah, it's kind of an odd situation here. I'll just leave it at that. So I haven't really wanted to fertilize it because I never know if I'm gonna have it again, but some fertilizer on this place would do wonders for it. But fertilizer is expensive and I don't want to stick money into something that I don't know I'm gonna have the next year. So I haven't been doing that, but this is the main part of it here. It's decent hay, it's grass hay, it's not got too many weeds or anything in it, but it's just thin. It's, I've cut it, this is the second year I've cut it, and it's just, it's always thin, but I think it was thin before I had it too, but uh, the guy that was cutting it passed away, so I ended up on it the last couple of years, but not a bad hay field. But uh, we could use some rain, we could use some fertilizer on it for sure. We could use rain on everything right now. Uh, it's getting mighty, mighty dry. So I would say as thin as this is, honestly, we could probably bale it later this afternoon, but I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. But I have been letting the thick hay set for two days before I rake and bale it. But this here is only gonna need a day, so yeah. Another one done, on to the next.